Hello and welcome to a video presentation on equivalent fractions. Here's what you'll learn. How to identify and write equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions are fractions that represent the same amount but have different numbers in their numerators and denominators. Let me use a graphic to explain. Here's a rectangle on the left side of your screen and I'm going to create one of equal size right beside it. Now let's cut the box on the left into three equal rectangles. Just like that. And let's cut the box on the right into six equal rectangles. Just like that. Now if we fill in one of the three boxes on the left and two of the six boxes on the right, I'm sure you would agree we have filled in the same amount of area in each of the original sized rectangles. As a fraction, we have filled in one out of three boxes on the left, and as a fraction we have filled in two out of six boxes on the right. That means one-third and two-sixths are equivalent fractions. Now there are an infinite number of equivalent fractions for every fraction. You can create equivalent fractions by multiplying the numerator and denominator of a fraction by the same number. Multiplying a number or a fraction by one doesn't change the value of that number or fraction. I'm sure you'd agree that 18 times 1 gives me 18. And if I multiplied 1 half by 1, I'd still get 1 half. So multiplying a number or a fraction by 1 does not change its value. Also note, fractions that have the same numerator and denominator are equal to 1. So 3 over 3 or 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. 17 over 17 is equal to 1. 100 over 100 is equal to 1 and so on. Any number divided by itself gives me 1. So knowing that, suppose we want to find an equivalent fraction for 1 half. Let's write down 1 half. We can multiply it by another fraction that's equivalent to 1 because we know 1 half times 1 will give us 1 half. So let's multiply 1 half by a fraction that's equivalent to 1. In this case, let's use 3 over 3. Now we'll have a new numerator made up of 1 times 3 and a new denominator that's 2 times 3. Solving that multiplication gives us our equivalent fraction. 1 times 3 is 3 as our new numerator. 2 times 3 gives us 6 for our new denominator. So 3 sixths is equivalent to 1 half. Let's find another fraction equivalent to 1 half. This time let's take 1 half and turn the 1 into, oh, let's say 12 over 12. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 12. Our new numerator becomes 1 times 12. The denominator becomes 2 times 12. So solving those multiplication problems, 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 12 is 24. So we now know that 1 half is equivalent to 3 over 6, which is also equivalent to 12 over 24. All three fractions are equivalent to each other. Now I mentioned there are an infinite number of equivalent fractions for every fraction. We already multiplied top and bottom by the same number, but you can also create equivalent fractions by dividing the numerator and denominator of a fraction by the same number. Dividing a number or a fraction by 1 doesn't change the value of the number or fraction either, just as multiplying didn't. 18 divided by 1 still gives us 18, and if we take 1 half and divide it by 1, we still get 1 half. So dividing a number by 1 does not change its value. Knowing that, suppose we want to find an equivalent fraction for a larger fraction, like 20, over 30. We could certainly multiply the top and bottom by the same number, but in this case, let's go ahead and divide it 
by another fraction equivalent to 1. We know that 20 over 30 divided by 1 will give us 20 over 30. So let's go ahead and divide 20 over 30 by a fraction that's equal to 1. And in this case, let's start with 2 divided by 2. So our numerator then becomes 20 divided by 2, while the denominator is 30 divided by 2. Let's go ahead and solve those. 20 divided by 2 gives us 10 and 30 divided by 2 gives us 15. So 10 fifteenths is equivalent to 20 over 30. Let's find another fraction that's equivalent to 20 over 30. And we're going to go ahead and divide by a fraction that's equal to 1. Uh, this time let's use 5. Let's use 5 on the top, 5 on the bottom. We'll have 20 divided by 5 for the numerator, 30 divided by 5 for the denominator. Solve each of those. 20 divided by 5 gives us 4, and 30 divided by 5 gives us 6. So we know that 20 over 30 is equivalent to 10 over 15, which is equivalent to 4 over 6. All three fractions are equivalent to each other. Now let's go ahead and do a couple of examples. Let's find a fraction equivalent to 11 fourteenths. First, let's write down our fraction, 11 over 14. And we, we can create an equivalent fraction by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number. Now we can use any number, so I just happen to pick 4 for this example. So we're going to multiply the top by 4 and the bottom by 4. That gives us 11 times 4 in the numerator. 14 times 4 in the denominator. Let's solve that. 11 times 4 is 44, and 14 times 4 is 56. So 44 over 56 is equivalent to 11 over 14. Now let's find a fraction equivalent to 36 over 48. First, let's write down that fraction, 36 over 48. We can create an equivalent fraction also by dividing a numerator and denominator by the same number, so that's what we're going to do this time. We can use any number. I could use 2 because 2 goes evenly into both of those numbers, or 4, but I picked 12 since I know 12 divides evenly into both 36 and 48, so we'll divide top and bottom by 12. Our new numerator will be 36 divided by 12. The denominator will be 48 divided by 12. Let's go ahead and solve the math. 36 divided by 12 is 3. 48 divided by 12 is 4. So 3 fourths is a fraction equivalent to 36 over 48. Now, what if someone gives us two fractions and asks us if they're equivalent? How do we determine that? Well, here are four methods for determining if two fractions are equivalent. Method 1 you can cross multiply to see if the products are the same. Method 2. Convert both fractions to fractions with a common denominator. Method 3. Reduce both fractions to their simplest form. Method 4. Turn both fractions into decimals by dividing. Now, find the method that works best for you because you're only going to need one of these four. So once you have found one that you like, use it exclusively so it becomes natural and easy for you to do these problems. We're going to go through each method separately, starting with the cross-multiplying method. Now this is a three-step method and it happens to be my favorite. Step one, you're going to multiply the numerator of the first fraction with the denominator of the second fraction. Step two, Reverse that process and multiply the numerator of the second fraction with the denominator of the first fraction. And step three, check the products to see if they're equal. If they're equal, then the fractions are equivalent. Let's work a couple of examples now. Determine if the fractions shown are equivalent. Four-fifths is that equivalent to 36 over 45. First, we're going to multiply the numerator of the fraction on the left, which is a 4, with the denominator of the fraction on the right, 
which is 45. Now 4 times 45 is 180. We're going to place this result under the fraction that has the numerator we multiplied by, which is the 4 for the fraction on the left. So we're going to put 180 under that fraction. Now multiply the denominator of the fraction on the left, which is 5, with the numerator of the fraction on the right, which is 36. 5 times 36 is 180. So we're going to place this result under the other fraction. That's the one with the numerator you just multiplied by. So 180 goes there. Step 3 says compare the products. Since 180 equals 180, guess what? Our fractions are also equivalent. 4 fifths equals 36 over 45. Let's do another example. Let's check 17 over 8 and see if it's equal to 22 over 12. First, multiply the numerator of the fraction on the left, which is 17, with the denominator of the fraction on the right, which is 12. 17 times 12 is 204. We're going to place this result under the fraction with the numerator you just multiplied by. So we're going to place 204 under the fraction on the left. Now multiply the denominator of the fraction on the left, the 8, with the numerator of the fraction on the right, the 22. 8 times 22 is 176, so we're going to place that result under the other fraction. And now we compare products. Since 204 does not equal 176, the fractions are not equivalent. 17 over 8 does not equal 22 over 12. Let's move on to the second method, the common denominator method. This is also a three-step method. Step 1, we're going to find a common denominator for each fraction. Step 2, we're going to create equivalent fractions with that common denominator. And step 3, we then compare the numerators. If they are equal, so are the fractions. We're going to use the same numbers and the same fractions we did in all of these methods. So again, we're going to check to see if 4 fifths is equivalent to 36 over 45. We know it is. We should get the same result with this method. First, we need to find a common denominator. To do that, See if the smaller number denominator, which is 5, will divide evenly into the larger number denominator, the 45. And of course it will. 5 divides evenly into 45 9 times. That means we can use 45 as our common denominator. And not only that, we won't have to change the second fraction at all. It's already a fraction with 45 in the denominator, so we're going to leave that as 36 over 45. However, we do have to change the first fraction. We have to multiply the 5 by 9. 5 times 9 gives us our common denominator of 45 for that fraction. And to make the equivalent fraction, we multiply the numerator by 9 also. So we have 4 times 9, and that gives us 36 in the numerator of that fraction. Now we can see 36 over 45 equals 36 over 45. Since those fractions are equivalent, guess what? 4 fifths is also equivalent to 36 over 45. And here's the second example comparing 17 over 8 with 22 over 12. First, we need to find a common denominator for these two fractions. To do that, see if the smaller number denominator, 8, will divide evenly into the larger number denominator, 12. And does it? No, it does not. So we're going to try the next multiple of the larger number denominator, which is 12. And the larger multiple, or the next multiple of 12, is 24. So we're going to use 24 as our common denominator, provided 8 divides evenly into it. It does. 8 divides evenly into 24 three times. So 24 will be our common denominator. 
and both fractions will have to be changed to use 24. So let's work with the fraction on the left. We multiply 8 by 3, that gives us 24 as the denominator of our fraction. And we have to multiply the numerator 17 also by 3 to get an equivalent fraction, and that gives us 51 in the numerator. Now let's work with the fraction on the right. We multiplied the 12 by 2 to get to 24, so we'll have to multiply the numerator 22 by 2 as well. 22 times 2 gives us 44. Now compare the numerators, since we have a common denominator, and we can see they are not equivalent. So that means that 17 over 8 is not equivalent to 22 over 12. And that's in agreement with the first method that we used as well. Now let's go on to method 3, reducing the fractions to simplest form. We reduce each fraction until the only common factor between the numerator and denominator is a 1. To get to the point where the only common factor between the two numbers is 1, we're going to divide each number in the numerator and denominator by the largest factor that they have in common. So let's go ahead and jump into our examples. Again, we want to check 4 fifths and 36 over 45. For the fraction on the left, the only common factor between 4 and 5 is 1. So it's already in simplest form. So let's just write down 4 over 5 as is. For the fraction on the right, the largest factor the numerator and denominator have in common is a 9. So divide the top and the bottom by 9. 36 divided by 9 is 4 for our numerator, and 45 divided by 9 is 5 for our denominator. With both fractions reduced to their simplest form, it becomes apparent the reduced fractions are equivalent. And since the reduced fractions are equivalent, the original fractions are equivalent as well. So we know 4 fifths is equivalent to 36 over 45. Now let's work with that second example, comparing 17 over 8 with 22 over 12. For the fraction on the left, the only common factor between 17 and 8 is 1. So that means that fraction is already in simplest form. So let's just write down 17 over 8 on the left. For the fraction on the right, the greatest common factor that 22 and 12 have in common is 2. So we're going to divide the top and the bottom by 2. 22 divided by 2 is 11. That's our numerator. And 12 divided by 2 is 6. That's our denominator. Now with both fractions reduced to their simplest form, it becomes apparent the reduced fractions are not equivalent to each other. And if the reduced fractions are not equivalent, our original fractions are not equivalent either. 17 over 8 is not equivalent to 22 over 12. Now let's look at method number 4, converting fractions to their decimal equivalents. We're going to convert each fraction into its equivalent decimal value. Since fractions are division problems, we just divide the numerator by the denominator. Example 1, we're going to compare 4 fifths to 36 over 45 again. For the fraction on the left, divide 4 by 5 and you'll find that gives you 0 0.8. For the fraction on the right, divide 36 by 45 and you'll find that gives you 0 0.8. Well, guess what? Since both decimal values are equal, that means our two fractions are equivalent as well. 4 fifths is equivalent to 36 over 45, as we expected. And let's look at that second example now, comparing 17 over 8 with 22 over 12. For the fraction on the left, divide 17 by 8. That gives us 2.125. For the fraction on the right, we're going to divide 22 by 12. 
that gives us approximately 1.83 and the division goes on and on, but it's not important. Since the decimal values are not going to be equal, that means our two fractions are not equivalent as well. 17 over 8 is not equivalent with 22 over 12. So congratulations! You've just learned how to identify and write equivalent fractions.